Hi lovelies and welcome to this witch vlog. I decided to celebrate Beltane or how we call it in Germany Walpurgisnacht or Tanzen in Mai a teensy tiny bit early this year in order to present you with a witchy vlog filled with magical ideas on how to celebrate Beltane, traditional Walpurgisnacht kitchen witchery, a lot of customs, folk witchcraft from my area and just a ton of ideas and tidbits for the day itself and for your Beltane celebration. So I do hope you enjoy. I'm very excited to take you through the day and I do hope it serves you as a little inspiration. Okay, but first let's see what we have planned. I do hope you enjoy. Let's rewind the day to the morning. Custom for Beltane or May Day is actually to go out at the butt crack of dawn, which I've done, and collect some water. In some countries it's the dew from the first plants, here in Germany it's some fresh spring water and this special magical water is said to give you eternal youth and beauty if you wash your face with it and who doesn't want that? So I saw my chance for a very low cost beauty product here. So what I'm going to do is to collect some water and then take it home for some cottage witchery because I have one or two lovely little Beltane spells for you. And even though today is not the morning of Beltane, it's actually the morning where sunrise coincides with a pink full moon so I thought it's magical and lovely as well. You know me or maybe not in that case. Hi I'm Bex. I very much do love to intertwine magic with the mundane so I will also use this calm first hour of the day for a little meditation here at the water and of course Beltane is all about fertility, love, lust, just excitement and happiness and the carnal pleasures. And there's also a lot of folk traditions about this of course, some of which include a scooting over stones without your knickers on, which I decided not to do. I just gotta meditate and write on a piece of paper all the things that I would love to improve in my relationship. Might it be just romantically or also sexual. And I will also think of ways on how to communicate that and what I can do better myself. And then once back home we'll help that along with a bit of magic.
tradition that surround Beltane, it is very, very clear what that pagan holiday is actually about. For example, take the maypole, big tree that gets rammed into the earth and uh, sticks up like a pole and uh, people dance around it and celebrate. I'm pretty certain that almost everyone here can conclude what the male pole is supposed to symbolize. Here in Bavaria we have a ton of fun traditions around the maypole. You either have little ones that you put in the garden of your sweetheart or you also have like in a village a big one that is usually a erected by the men and then they have to guard it the entire night from the 30th to the 1st so the other village doesn't steal it. As far as I know it can be bought back with beer though. Back in the times people also believed that copulating on the fields would bring fertility to them. To be very honest it sounds like a fun idea but I think I'm too old to be fine for that again. So I thought I gonna go the easier route of some sex magic in my own four balls. We are going to make two aphrodisiacs that you can use in your Beltane celebration as part of a little ritual or to just bring a little bit of spice into your sex magic. If you're working with seasonal energies, Beltane in general holds very good opportunities for spells surrounding love, lust, fertility, and it can be all kinds of fertility, abundance, happiness. So if you have any wants or needs in those topics, Beltane would be the day to tackle that magically. Now first we will make a little massage oil, get you in the mood for all kinds of shenanigans. And for that you just need a basis oil like almond oil or a yo-yo bar oil, and then you need a scent component. Component. Here you can either use essential oils or you can also use herbs, flowers or rinds of citrus fruit for example. You just want to make sure that it is skin safe. In order to really infuse the oil so that the scent sticks if you're working with materials like me, you would have to leave it covered in the oil for a couple of days. In order to prolong the shelf lives of any of those products, you want to make sure that of course you cooked the containers in boiling water first before working with them. I chose cinnamon because the scent is known as an aphrodisiac and if you want you can also add a little bit of orange rind just to give it a little bit of a kick and energy because the very point of that massage oil is not to have you fall asleep. And another fun little thing to do to set the tone for the evening with your partner or for yourself is to do a little pillow mist spray. Very easy as well, the only things you need is a witch hazel and distilled water. I'm actually going to distill the water that I gather now in the morning. If you want to gather water from an open body of water, make sure that the water is regularly checked and that it is safe. I then infused the witch hazel with rose petals because I wanted to bring in a little bit of a romance, a little bit of love. We mix it all together, we let it sit for a while and there we have it. Your cottage witch aphrodisiac love spray for Beltane. As is tradition, we try to climb a little <laughs> hill or mountain um, to have a little picnic on top to celebrate because that's how it was used to be done back in the days, like fires would be lit on top of like bigger hills, but I grossly underestimated how unfit I am. <laughs> and well, I'm with someone that has very tiny legs. Die Mami braucht noch kurz eine Pause, okay? Pause. Okay. Mami is not so fit. <laughs> so we're now sitting at about the half a point and we're having a lovely little snack with a dandelion cake which um, I'll actually show you how to do that.
we're gonna build a lovely little Walpurgisnachtfeuer, which traditionally is done with nine different woods. We, we won't do that. Just take whatever we have and dance around it in our underwear. We don't really do that, but you know. I thought I was gonna share a little bit of folk magic and superstitions around Walpurgisnacht with you. And there are actually three very important herbs for the celebration. The first one is ground ivy, the second one is sweet wood rough, and the third one is... Coming through. Can't look it up, I don't have my phone with me, but uh, the third one is this one. Hast du gießen? Dankeschön! Hast du gegossen? Hast du Zwiebeln gegossen? A very, very old custom is to make refs, 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 refs of ground ivy. And that plant in ancient Germanic belief is actually very important because it was sacred to Donar, the thunder god. And so nowadays it's still like in colloquial language called the thunder herb or the weather herb, the thunderstorm flower. And people believe that it will protect your house from lightning. Since Walpurgisnacht or Beltane is all about fertility rights. It was used in a, a different way. In the rural areas, farmers would cut it up and like put it in their cows or their chickens feed to make them more fertile in the coming year so that the little chickens or the little cows and calves would like grow strong. It was also a custom to make this wreath, so put it around the container and then milk the cows through it so they would give a lot of milk that year. And in the night from the 30th of April to the 1st of May it was custom to wear them on your head and dance around the fire and jump over the Walpurgisnachtfeuer. And the story behind it is that it would help you see clear, it would help you see the truth and it would open up your mind. So some say if you wear it then you can see who is a witch in your village. <laughs> Back in the medieval ages people were obviously very concerned with like evil spirits or witches how they called it. And other sources say you can see the other world when you wear it on the night of Walpurgis or the night of Beltane. I made this beautiful little wreath, but then of course little hands came and destroyed it! So I, you know, did what I could. <laughs> Let's see if I can still spot some fairies tonight. Maybe the Maywine helps with that. <laughs> is actually a traditional dance in the May drink and it is made with a second really important Beltane or Walpurgis herb which is sweet woodruff and if you ever visit Germany and you want to drink that at a May party or a Walpurgisnacht party the only way is to either make it yourself or to have it at a friend's place. Bars and restaurants are not allowed to sell the real stuff because it's very peculiar when you have to harvest this in order to basically not poison yourself. You can also not drink too much of it because it will give you the worst, the worst headache. And not from the alcohol, but just from the sweet woodruff and the kurmarin that's in it. But today I will have a little cheeky glass, so cheers! <laughs> 
Also, if you're interested in a traditional recipe, it will be up on my Patreon on the 1st of May. It's now dedicated to eating, drinking, celebrating, and uh, ancient fertility rites. What's the tiny human in bed? Because that's what Beltane is all about. <laughs> and with my magic little herb bundle on my head, I will now enjoy a lovely little story about fairies with my son while my partner is making a barbecue. I would love to hear how you are celebrating. Thank you for following along and see you soon. Have a happy Beltane.